If your Salesforce environment is like an ecosystem, then defensive development techniques like fault elements help your flow survive in that ecosystem. If someone adds a new validation rule to your environment that requires a field to be completed that did not exist when your flow was built, using fault elements help your flow survive that change and fail gracefully without alerting the end user there's a problem. In software development, risk is what's left after you thought of everything, and fault elements help us mitigate risk. Let's explore how to use a fault path in the key flow types. First up, we will talk about screen flows. In your screen flows, you will likely receive errors when you're using one of the pink data elements. In these scenarios, you'll need to define on paper what should happen during a flow failure. That way, you know what to build into your fault path logic. Generally, the cause of an error in a screen flow is that a create or update record is uh, in some way conflicting with what Salesforce is expecting. So that could be a validation rule is being fired or you've mismapped a type. Let's say you've put a text value into a date time field. And in these scenarios, it's uh, helpful to create an error screen that shows the end user a message letting them know what went wrong and then sending yourself uh, as the admin an email to notify you of the failure. You can connect a create or update element to a fault path in the freeform layout just by dragging it to your desired logic and ensuring that the fault um, or the connecting line is read. You will need to make sure that your element is already connected to something else in order to get that red line to appear. In the auto layout, this is a lot simpler. You just click add fault path and then you can connect um, your element to an existing fault path or you can define new logic there. It's absolutely possible to connect multiple elements to the same fault logic by reconnecting each canvas element to the logic you have already defined. You can repeat this as many times as is necessary. Back to our screen flow, let's discuss the two fault actions I mentioned earlier of sending an email to yourself and then routing users to a specific message on an error screen. The email that you send yourself can be as vague or specific as you like. It's often easiest to create a text template in the flow that includes all the information you'd want to know about in the event of a failure. For example, you could include the record ID if the screen flow is trying to update a record. You can include the name of the current running user. And using the flow global variable, you can even pull the actual Salesforce error message into your email to review. You could imagine that if the flow experiences an error, you route the flow to this specific fault path where you get the email uh, notification immediately, and then immediately after your email action, you can route the user to your error screen, where you define a message for them, letting them know that the flow has failed. You can even show them the message that the flow um, provides to you about the failure, and then ask them to try again later, and if they continue to experience issues, to reach out to you directly. Doing this is a fun Wizard of Oz moment where you are behind the curtain and get to define your own error message for end users, and after this screen, you can route users back to one of the earlier screens in the flow and have them keep looping through the process rather than having them get the nasty unhandled fault occurred message. Up next are record triggered flows. Using a fault path in a record triggered flow works the same way it does in screen flows. You simply define your fault logic and then connect any element that you want handled by the fault logic to the fault path. It's important to note that if a fault path executes in a record triggered flow, the end user is not made aware that there has been an error, which means that if they're expecting an automation to run, but the fault is triggered instead, the automation will not run just the fault logic. All the database operations in the flow, like creating or updating records, are automatically rolled back if there's an error. This feature of record triggered flow fault paths where the user is unaware of a failure can be both good and bad. It's good to give end users a high quality experience where they don't uh, have any errors occurring, but if an error message uh, displays, it can be helpful for users to be prevented from completing their work, especially when an automation is failing. Because in that scenario, they'll get an error in the UI, understand something is broken, they'll contact you as the admin, and once you fix it, they can complete their work later. Without an immediate error message, they won't know that they need to go back and uh, trigger the automation. In that scenario, it'll be your role as the admin to take the fault path notification and go look up the record they're working with and complete the intended automation on their behalf after resolving the issue. It's certainly possible to have your flow quote unquote read the fault message by building a formula to check if the error message contains specific language and if it does take specific actions inside the flow. 
This could be helpful if you know your environment so well that you can predict the one or two errors causing problems for certain automation and handle them in advance with some separate flow logic in the fault path designed for their specific occurrence. Platform event triggered flows are up next, and in my experience, they are few and far between. To date, the only ones I've seen are ones that I have built. Let me know in the comments if you've ever seen or worked with a platform event triggered flow, and let me know what was it doing. I'm just curious. When it comes to tying a fault path into a platform event triggered flow, it's extremely useful to understand what the platform event that is triggering the flow is trying to do so that you'll know how to support it with your fault logic. Platform events have fields just like custom objects do, and the events themselves are created either by Salesforce automations or by external systems through the API. What I've done with platform events that are designed to be created through an external system is create a custom object with fields that match up one-to-one -one with the platform event fields. This way, if a platform event is inserted into Salesforce and it's supposed to trigger a platform event driven flow, we can create a fault path inside the flow that logs all the field information one-to-one -one from the event into our custom object record if that flow fails for some reason. This is a great way to ensure that you don't lose data or miss an automation that should run, and it lets you go back later and re-trigger specific automations with the data that the event contained. The custom object itself is reportable, so you can always see when new records of the event log are created, and you can even get notified with a custom report subscript subscription. And that brings us to our final flow type, which is scheduled triggered flows. Just like all the other flow types, scheduled triggered flows can have fault paths created. And the thing to keep in mind about a fault path here is that it will execute potentially for each record that fails. And depending on the scheduled triggered flow, that could be quite a lot. Uh, for this reason, sending an email in the fault path may result in hundreds of emails and isn't necessarily most helpful to you as the admin. If you know that your flow will only run on a few records, an email is absolutely fine. And if not, using a custom object similar to what we did with platform events and calling that custom object something like error log could be a, a useful approach. So what you could do is create the custom error log object in Salesforce and use it in general to house automation related errors. And as a long-term approach, this could be applied to more than just scheduled triggered flows. You could design the object to include a description field that you map the flow message into. Uh, you could include a lookup relationship so that the error log object can log the record that you're working with. Uh, and then just like we did with platform event trigger flows, you could build a report that tracks new instances of this error log object so that if a scheduled triggered flow fault path fires and this object gets created, you'll see it in the report. The main benefit to doing this is that the error log object is reusable. So it could also be helpful in other flow fault paths and potentially uh, apex code. And if doing all this development feels like too much work, you could consider skipping a fault path in the scheduled triggered flow and instead rely directly on the paused and failed flow interview tab in the setup menu. Uh, in this menu, you'll see a list of all the flow failures that recently occurred. And if you click into one of them, you'll notice that there's debug information and specific details on where that flow failed in its execution. This will give you all the detail that you need to troubleshoot and can be indispensable when you're trying to get to the bottom of an issue. The only downside here is that there is no automated alert, so make sure you're, uh, you are going to check this daily if uh, it is your fault handling method, otherwise something could get missed. To summarize, the fault element is a simple yet powerful defensive development technique that can be used to create error handling in your flows. Let me know down in the comments which creative ways I missed in using the fault element, and let me know if this content format is helpful to you. I don't see too many Salesforce videos in this style, and I don't know if that's because it's hard to edit or if it's just because it's not useful. Lastly, make sure to like and subscribe if you think this helped you out.